Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It is January the 15th, 2012, Sunday evening. Very interesting report uh, out of Australia about a uh, eight times background airborne spike in radiation. Um, this happened uh, January 8th. And it's very intriguing because there's a good potentiality that this is uh, related to uh, Fukushima and uh, radioactive spread via ocean current. And this could be significantly important to people on the west coast of the United States because if this is related to Fukushima, then these same things are happening along the west coast of the United States, but uh, potentially in a greater intensity. Now what we have here is from, uh, it was reported on, I think, January 8th. And this is uh, an average, time averaging spikes. So the true spike in radiation here, it was actually two times higher than this. And what you'll notice, I mean, the location was, I hope I'm saying this correctly, uh, Kalundra, Australia. And it's preceded by a drop in radioactivity. And they've got some good measurements out for a while, um, average values for a year back. So this was an unprecedented increase. It happened, I think the increase happened around 6.30 p.m. and it dropped off about four hours later. Now the key factors in this are, this was free air measurement. This isn't a rain swipe. This is eight times background radiation in the air. Now just to show you where, uh, they actually made the news of course, uh, the news immediately dubbed it that the radiation cloud was not harmful. Yeah, and we think that's irresponsible, especially if anybody was caught in the rain that filtered through this 8x cloud. And we believe this is long half-life radiation. We do not believe this is short half-life uh, radon daughters. And we'll get into that in, two, in a little bit. But uh, go ahead and show you how we think this is related to Fukushima. Now here's a map we found of ocean currents. Now the location of where this measurement was taken was right down here in uh, eastern Australia, uh, southeastern Queensland I believe. And here we have Fukushima. What you'll notice is that there's a uh, clockwise spiral in the currents here and it counterclockwise in the spiral of the currents here and this is the equatorial region. Now there's actually a deep ocean current that goes around and crosses the equator and comes down through here too. Now what's key about this, especially in the waterborne radioactive contamination, is that the stuff can hop, skip, and jump. It doesn't have to stay in the water. It can evaporate out, it can cross this boundary, as a rain and skip back down into the water. So there's a constant evaporation cycle here that can move radioactive contamination across very quickly. In fact, uh, back in the, at the end of March, there was a sulfur 35 detection here in California that came out of Fukushima. And the sulfur 35 was created when ocean water was pumped into uh, the Fukushima reactors. Uh, neutron bombardment of uh, chlorine changed it into sulfur 35 and that flowed back out into the ocean. It took uh, approximately I think 18 days for it to cross the Atlantic and come into California. So that's not purely 18 days by ocean current. This is 18 days by ocean current evaporation, ocean current evaporation. Same thing we believe is happening here. Now if we do a close-up and here's the location again of the area, Calundra. Now if you look here here are the equatorial currents and they're all dumping down into this region and there's some stagnation currents here. So this key part of Australia here is one place where we would expect this first to be detected or a likely place for detection especially with these stagnation points. So let's go back over to the detection itself and show you the map. Now here's Australia. Uh, this is Brisbane, Australia down here at the very bottom. 
and the detection occurred here at Calundra and what I was able to do was go into some uh, Australian government uh, uh, weather data and pick weather data up. The closest location I could find was here, point B, which is I believe is pronounced <laughs> Maruchidor. And then I bookmarked it on either end by uh, going north here to uh, Clinton and then south here to uh, Cape Morton. So this is the actual location. Now if you notice here is a continental shelf. So those those currents we saw here earlier in this location, they're actually coming in off deep ocean and rising up into the continental shelf. So let's go back. So we're talking, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the region. You can see where in Australia we are. Right up in here. So these uh, currents are coming in through the Coral Sea. Now what I've done here is I looked for uh, news accounts of uh, what was unique about this day in, uh, Queen in uh, Queensland. And the interesting thing is uh, this correlates to the hottest day in Queensland in close to eight years. There's also high humidity. So here's the closest data point we have to uh, where this detection occurred. And this is Sunday, uh, January 8th. Now the key things to notice here is, uh, you'll see there's two zones here, a 9 a.m. measurement and a 3 p.m. measurement. Uh, the actual detection started, I believe, at uh, 5.30 p.m. is where the drop was, and then at 6 p.m. around there was the maximum. So if we go here to the 28th, and you notice here, uh, this is marked in red because it indicates the highest this month highest temperature uh, 34.8 degrees Celsius so they had a very hot day here now notice the uh, the change in wind direction we go from a southerly wind the day before to a northerly wind the day after and back toward heading towards a southerly wind afterwards now the actual detection the wind was coming out of the north northeast and also look at these wind speeds 33 kilometers per hour next day 35 kilometers per hour so they had extremely high winds and very high humidity during this time period so there was a uh, change in direction of wind from south uh, to north and basically what that means is is this radiation that they're detecting is coming in basically off of this area here off the coast and uh, a quick swag we did you know, an off-the-cuff uh, analysis we figured that uh, the, the initial point of highest radiation was uh, no more than a hundred miles out so within a hundred miles here of Calundra is where we think the initial highest point of radiation was when it started blowing in now we also took some data again looked at the data for directly north and again here you can see the wind direction changes and again the highest wind day 22 uh, kilometers per hour and then we went and if you notice here no rain no rain here indicated in Twanton in the last previous days in uh, Maruchidor it appears there was some rain the day before just a little bit 0.6 millimeters now we'll go to Cape Morton and Cape Morton had a little bit of rain the day of and a lot of rain for at least for the month uh, 4.8 millimeters so that would be highest this month and again you can see the wind direction changing and the high rates of wind here and high temperatures now the other thing we did was this is from weather underground we looked at the exact times here of, uh, now this data here is from Brisbane, Australia and you can see the winds here in US measurements are 18-19 uh, miles an hour and here's the jet stream on the day of and you notice the jet stream is coming in this direction uh, the location of the measurement is here so the jet stream is actually moving away 
pushing air away from. And what's key about that is there have been some suggestions that uh, the source of the radioactivity was from a nuclear plant down here, which is, let's see, Lucas Heights, uh, North South Wales, Australia, which is down here by Sydney. And it's over a thousand kilometers away. And here was a previous analysis done of uh, releases from this uh, nuclear plant. And you can see usually the majority of them are to uh, the south. There's a slight tail going up here. But if we go back to the uh, jet stream map, you can see it would be pushing away. So we tend to think it, if it was from that, from that uh, location, it was from several days before and there was a lot of it. So let's go back here. So again, the, key are, the keys are these stagnation uh, currents here these rotational currents, bringing it in from Fukushima. And in essence, what this means, if, and it's an if, if this is from Fukushima, there's potentially some, some significant uh, radioactive contamination of uh, the Coral Sea here, and even more so here in the United States. But uh, again, the, one of the things that would have made it easier to detect here, are these inbound, and again, the wind was blowing from this direction, these stagnation loops here. So it's a, uh, it's a very interesting case. And the, the most concerning part is it was 8x background in free air, most likely in the individual's house. And it lasted for multiple hours. So this uh, fallout's not being deposited on the person's house. This is blowing through and it took over four hours for the uh, peak to blow on through. So if we take the uh, the wind speed and the duration, that's how we came up with the off-the-cuff analysis of 100 miles out, which would put us right out in here. So this is uh, very troubling. It's very troubling for the people here in Columbia because uh, 8x background in the air, free, especially anybody who got rained on that day, and it doesn't look like it's short half-life radiation. It's some serious business. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's Fukushima. It's also possible maybe there was a, a large boat out there, an ocean-going vessel, that uh, dumped a bilge full of radioactive water off the coast, and that's what's being picked up. But if you look at the, uh, the temperature information, the wind direction change, the very high temperatures and the very high wind speeds coming in through here at these times. Yeah, what it says is, is that this stuff could have come in from at least 100 miles and not spread too far apart. Low pressure, high winds, changing wind direction. So what we likely have here is there was a bit of rain over the coast that uh, washed out the local contamination out of the air. And behind that rain was whatever evaporated up out of the ocean and it blew in and then it took four or five hours for the rest of the way to blow out. But uh, anybody in this region of Australia who got rained on in that day, you know, it'd be a good time to go take a uh, swipe of your rain gutters and uh, see what type of contamination you find. Uh, some scary stuff. Good night.